right, welcome back. Now, uh, so this spread I did a video on. This is all of my yellow ochres and a couple of the red ochres as well. And that was really fun to just uh, swatch out. I think there was a request a couple of times to show all of my yellow ochres. Um, after I finished filming the video, I think that's the same evening, I went and looked through my yellow ochres in my pencil range and I looked through Devant Graphite Tint, so I'll just put it here. You can basically pose it and write down if there's anything particular that you want. But there's some colored pencils over there and the ones that have wet on them, so it's the Derwent Graphite Tint Chestnut, Caran Dash Brown Ochre and then at the bottom we have Derwent Ink Tans in tan and amber, which I find super beautiful. Actually, during these two swatches, I um, found or rediscovered my enjoyment in using them, and I thought, my goodness, why didn't I? Why did I stop using them for years? Um, they used to be what actually started the whole, you know, the the faces and everything illustration for me years ago and they were the first big pencil set that I ever bought so the 72 pencil tin okay Daniel Smith we have Conacridon Gold, Sodalite Gen, Genuine and Deep Scarlet so these three colors are used in my color wheel to see what kind of you know secondaries I could get and what I thought was the most amazing discovery in this is actually this Part here. So it's a three part video. Um, firstly, doing the color wheel, then exploring the colors in between the secondaries, so the um, between mixes, and then the neutrals. And that was the biggest surprise ever. So I used this dish uh, to mix the three colors, and whatever was the end result is actually what resulted in these bunnies. Um, and if you remember, I put a picture on Instagram and I completely forgot where this mix came from. Um, however, when I was editing this video, I realized what it was. And it was remarkable because this and these are all from the same palette. So look at that. I didn't add any more colors. I just added some water. And obviously the first kind of light mix I just got these colors but when I on the second added a bit more water and started mixing more of the colors I got to these browns and they are just absolutely stunning so I wrote down the mix right here so that next time I can totally recreate it it's just the most beautiful thing all right so let's go back now so we have Etcher makeup palette so this is when I filled up that 37 mini palette uh, with colors, I have a whole series on on the process of um, you know the thinking behind it, why I picked the colors, how I picked them, how I filled it up, how I would find my way around it, and you know also there is a tutorial for this uh, illustration as well. So I just decided to use all watercolors in the colors that would work for me to do makeup. Um, and you see all of them here, basically. So it's quite a um, specific color palette. It doesn't have all of your um, traditional colors in there. And then there's just some boring mixes here. Nothing fantastic to report on. Just using up. I think I, I had some squeezed out and I just decided to use them up. Um, this is coming back to the um, this layout and there is a video where I am trying out this brush, I think. So it's the Princeton Velvet Touch round, long round number 12. And you can create as big brush marks as this to then go to as thin as that. And um, this brush is like capable of so much in just one brush and it's a fantastic uh, brush for illustrators um, who are working in watercolors I find because it just lends into these cute marks and things that you can do easily without needing to swatch or switch between different brush sizes or uh, even brush types so you can create a lot of different um, 
looks and backgrounds are fantastic with this brush because it holds loads of water and it just behaves in a unpredictable way which lends again well into um, illustrative style and that's what we already discussed here the colors then I have Daniel Smith Primatex is that all my Primatex? I don't remember oh I think I have done like a swatch out I don't remember honestly what this was. I think this might have prompted um, a few of my viewers to ask for an updated um, Primatech video because I do have one uh, where I swatch out all of my Primatechs but since then, this was like last year, since then I added a few colors and I think I will do that video with you and discuss the, the colors as we go. Um, here is some more. I think this is the tutorial that I did for the um, Easter Bunny. I just had to kind of the shape of them, how to draw different um, um, shapes of the body. And there is a bit of luminance blending here, which basically is a fantastic color match. So this is indigo and pink white at the top and then that's the middle color that you blend them together so the pink white pulls out the beautiful inky blue of the dark indigo uh, that you wouldn't see otherwise because it's such an intense color in its um, uh, mass tone and it is a perfect match to the paints gray color and then we have here Daniel Smith Payne's Grey and Winsor Newton Rose de Ray. So these are the same two colors here. I just tried to mix and see how they neutralize each other. They they do look um, they do look pretty in my opinion. And then we have Karen Dash Museum Aquarelle. So I decided to swatch all of them out, and um, they look lovely. Again on this paper, everything works well. I think I realized I didn't have them down in the sketchbook, or maybe I did. I'm not sure now, but anyway, I wanted to have them in this sketchbook. Then we have Dermot Graphitin. So as you can see, I started basically going into a swatch uh, feast and just going through all of them. Sometimes it really helps uh, to swatch your art supplies and you might discover a color that could ignite some sort of ideas, um, bring some sort of inspiration. So, especially if you have pencils or art supplies that you haven't used for a long time, I highly recommend to just sit down one evening when you're undisturbed, you're not in any rush, you don't feel like you're wasting any time, and just kind of have a relaxing um, swatch out session. Okay, here, maybe the colors I shouldn't reveal. <laughs> So these are the colors from my um, palette, so this one here, but I should probably leave that. Anyways, I won't, I'll just show you like that, I won't go into detail. Um, yeah, um, I will do a separate, you know, review where I'll show you a lot more. I have a bunch of separate, like, swatch cards right here which I'll show you all the beautiful colors they mix in and just so excited about that palette. Um, there is already a lot of demand and I know it will do very well and my kind of wish or plan is that this palette will be a permanent palette. Um, I don't know about permanent but it will have quite a bit of restocks um, because it is so gorgeous I want to have like five to myself I know I will be sending a few to friends um, of mine as a gift so yeah the this palette is amazing um, I just love it so much just what I can get from like mixing those colors in between I didn't think about it when I was creating the palette I was primarily just going for this in individual colors but I think what must have happened is subconsciously because I have worked with so many color wheels and exploring and learning about color theory subconsciously this is what I must have created you know these colors that actually when you mix them amongst each other that they neutralize each other in a pretty way versus an ugly way so <laughs> Yeah, not only do you get beautiful four colors in there, but you get so much more when you start mixing them amongst each other, which doesn't happen very often. Um, so, 
we have Durband Ink Tents. So this is when I said to you I became a bit more curious about them and I decided to swatch them out here. Look at that, burnt orange. What an interesting color. It's almost got some weird dark bits in there. So these are super intense, really beautiful, really vibrant colors. Um, maybe I'll bring them up closer so that if you are interested in any of the colors, I wonder if you can buy them. You probably can buy them open stock, right, in tents? I'm pretty sure you, you should be able to do that. So here is this page, that page. the blues and purples and then the turquoises and greens so you can pose on these pages and write down the names and I think I will show you the others what were they the Durban graphite and maybe these as well yeah let me give you the Karen Dash Museum Aquarelle. So these are open stock, I bought them, not as a set. They're gorgeous colors, they're a must have. And then these colors. Look at that burn sienna 50%. I mean, most of these colors are a must have, but there's just some that are like a, an essential. So then the Derwent Graphite Tint. That meadow green is my favorite color out of all of them. I have to admit, I'm not using them very much at all. I haven't found a way to um, incorporate them in my art as well as other things. And then the last page, I decided just to have a little fun play and do those bunnies um, in the ink tents colors and see what I can get. So this is the mustard pencil, this is the baked earth and red oxide. So with them you can never fully get rid of the um, pencil marks like for instance you can do with aquarelle, museum aquarelle. So they are so creamy, so smooth, you can completely get rid of the pencil marks but you can't do that with the ink tents. So if you like that look, that painterly kind of pencil look with the um, marks of a pencil, then that could be something for you. Um, but you can see, um, I just added the pencil here and that's all the color that I pulled out. So if I added more, it'd be more intense, more dark, but just to show you that they're really, really pigmented. Um, so that's it. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed this flip through full of color and fun. Um, I already have gone ahead and bought two more as a backup uh, because that's how much I love them. I don't, I don't want them to be sold out and not being able to buy them. And also speaking of which, thank you so much whoever, um, or actually quite a few people suggested that they found this um, Dalaroni sketchbook on Amazon and basically that's my sketchbook here which is identical the only different thing here that I can see is that it says Hobbycraft exclusive but this is exactly the same thing there's nothing different about this paper and that's the sketchbook or the paper pad that I use for all of my monthly favorites and um, also haul swatches so look at that you know I went through a lot um, and as you can see I've got quite a little bit left and now I have purchased another three <laughs> so I have loads of backups of my favorite um, kind of experimental swatch books and I don't need to worry that that paper won't be available so it will last me a little bit. Alright, I hope you enjoyed this video and thanks for watching and see you soon.